The biggest change in Windows 8 from Windows 7 or earlier versions of Windows is there's no start button anymore. The little, the little button that was at the bottom of your screen which would click on to bring up the menu and launch your programs. It's completely gone, so that's going to shock a lot of people. Instead, the start menu is now a start screen that fills the entire monitor. And there you find little tiles, well actually large tiles on there, each representing a different program that you can run. So a lot of people are going to have a little, um, a little difficulty making that change between the desktop, self-contained desktop with the start button and the new start screen because you're constantly switching back and forth between the desktop and the start screen when you, when you, want, to run a, when you want to run a program. The new book was a lot different to write. Um, it's, it's more like describing two operating systems in one. You've got the basic desktop, which I've been writing about for, for 20 years, and then you've got that new start screen, which runs its own little apps, little programs. So it's really like two operating systems in one, and um, it, uh, it, it took a lot, of, uh, a lot of effort to give both sides equal attention. Well, when writing Windows 8 for Dummies, I had to stay aware that people would be using it on a wide variety of devices. They'll be using it on the desktop computer with a mouse and a keyboard. They'll also be using it on, on uh, tablets, where they use their fingers mostly. So whenever I was writing something, uh, an instruction on how to do something, I'd always make sure to put the tablet instruction and the desktop instruction, because they're very different. Windows 8 works really well on a tablet. I don't know uh, if any of you out there have tried to use Windows 7 on a tablet, it just doesn't work right because you've got that desktop with all those tiny buttons, those tiny borders, tiny corners, uh, and a lot of it is text and it's just hard to get your finger on all those little nooks and crannies. With Windows 8, it's designed for the tablet, you've got large tiles on there which are really easy to touch, really easy to move with your finger to scroll through the menus. Uh, everything is larger and uh, and even the, uh, the control panel, you don't have to hit tiny little icons. You've got large, uh, large letters that are just so easy to, to, to touch. It really works well on a tablet, and that's where I think Windows 8 really shines. When using Windows 8 with a mouse and keyboard, it's really important to, to uh, remember the corners of the screen because you move your mouse to each corner of the screen and it'll do something very different. It'll bring up menus, it'll bring up um, recently used apps that you've seen in the background, and those menus don't appear unless you actually point your mouse into the corner. So that's a really important thing to do. If, uh, if the menus are hidden, they just don't come into sight until that mouse reaches that very corner. So the first thing you do when you turn on Windows 8, take your mouse and point at each corner and just see what each corner does.